Well, good evening and welcome to Crowley Grace Church of Chester and Elsmere Port. Uh, this is our evening uh, service, our evening Bible study from, uh, for Greater Grace Evangelical Church uh, of Chester, uh, Elsmere Port. Uh, welcome in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. First of all, if this is the first time you found us, then we're also uh, findable at uh, G. Church.co.uk and also on YouTube at Greater Grace Evangelical Church. Um, tonight we're going to be opening God's Word in a moment. Um, really just uh, bringing something from Psalm 61 again. Uh, for those of you um, <coughs> who would like to, uh, a few announcements for this week. Uh, we are going to be on Facebook on Wednesday as well at 7.30. Um, now you can actually join with us uh, on, face, uh, um, on Facebook at 7.30. You could join with us live here uh, and come and meet us at our home. We have a Bible study from home at the moment, uh, but we have him opened it up and... Uh, the last three weeks I think we've had people come round so um, you'd be very welcome to join us uh, for that uh, or watch online uh, you can also meet with us uh, at 11 o'clock on a Sunday morning now uh, this Thursday we will be uh, God willing on the streets of Chester at 7 o'clock in the evening plan is to meet uh, by the town hall but actually opposite the town hall where Barclays Bank is in Chester near just around the corner from the cathedral uh, and we will have our carol sheets with us uh, come wrap up warm but come and sing carols because we want to do that we usually do it each year we didn't do it last year because of the restrictions uh, but this year there are the same restrictions so we plan to go and sing carols to the glory of God just as a testimony to God's faithfulness and a reminder that Christmas is a spiritual time um, not just a secular festival of, uh, of buying things, commercialism and socialising and, uh, and parties but it actually has a spiritual significance come and join with us on uh, Thursday evening if you are able to uh, it would be very glad to have you. So that's in the centre of Chester. Excuse me. You're also welcome to join us with us at um, 11 o'clock on a Sunday morning. And uh, next week is a normal service on the 19th. We will uh, have a fellowship lunch. We will also have... Uh, carol singing in the afternoon we're going to go down to the village of Batford and sing on the green we've been out delivering invitations to the local houses uh, this afternoon uh, come and join with us for that also and there will be performances we're, we're uh, doing a, uh, we have a school play but this year we're going to do an adult play as well if you'd like to be part of that you can still contact us it's not too late uh, the play takes the form of, of short monologues so there's no bouncing lines off other, other people there's no waiting for your cue no dressing up in costumes it's very low key but hopefully also effective so um, come and join and be part of that as well um, you'd be very welcome ok so those are the announcements uh, for our church let's pray Let's uh, give this time to the Lord and we'll see what God does. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We worship you tonight. <clears throat> we want to give you the glory for your goodness and your faithfulness, for your love, for your gentleness, for your peace. Thank you for every good gift that you give us. Thank you for your amazing life, Lord. Thank you for your mercy. 
And Lord, tonight we just want to lift up those that are struggling in any way. Those that are sick, we want to think of um, Jane and also Tristan at this time, Lord. Mm -hmm. Others that may have uh, other sicknesses going on at this season. Uh, be with each one, Lord, now for uh, Ruby's grandson, Richard, as well, that you'd heal there for Joyce Morley as well, for many others, Lord, uh, for uh, uh, Pastor Graham Phillips in, in Cardiff as well. Really touch hearts, Lord, we pray, and be with Joe also, Lord. And Lord, we pray especially uh, as well uh, for the family uh, of Janice, uh, our dear sister, uh, who is taken home to be with you, Lord. We pray for again for for Kyle and Tanya and, and you and uh, for Charmaine and Alan and uh, each one, Sean, uh, Darlene, Tanya. Be with James. Be with Anne as well, a uh, dear friend of many years. And many that knew her as well, Stephen Dawn and the family, and uh, those from the mission, Tom Hand as well, Lord, and just many family and friends, who, and also the body of Christ, who will be missing her as well, each one. Lord, we just pray that you'd cover their strength and encourage, give your deep comfort, Lord, we pray this season. pray for Nigel as well and for Martina and Romanka and others who have been buried recently as well uh, Alex and Miriam down in London uh, especially touch each one that we pray and Lord guide us tonight as we open your word fill us with your life, fill us with your spirit Lord we uh, crave your truth we desire your presence Anoint we ask now in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. <coughs> well, we're going to be um, looking at Psalm 61, as we did this morning. And continuing on along the same theme, it says, Hear my cry, O God, attend unto my prayer. From the ends of the earth, I will cry unto thee, when my heart is overwhelmed. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For thou hast been a shelter for me, and a strong tower from the enemy. I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in the cover of thy wings, Selah. For thou, our God, hast heard my vows. Thou hast given me the heritage of those that fear thy name. Thou wilt prolong the king's life and, the ye and his years as many generations. He shall abide before God forever, or prepare mercy and truth which may preserve him. So will I sing praise unto thy name forever, that I may daily perform my vows. Okay, so let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, and, and we worship you again for your goodness and your faithfulness. We pray for your direction tonight, Lord for your anointing fill us with your spirit Lord we need you every moment we desire to glorify you we desire that the Lord Jesus Christ be lifted up and Lord we ask for your spirit to anoint with the fullness of your truth guide us now Lord we pray direct our thoughts every utterance Lord we pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ Amen 
This morning we were focusing on the crying out to the Lord. Uh, it's uh, a necessary thing for every one of us. At some stage in our life we will cry out to the Lord. Uh, we mentioned also um, the fact that he, even though we might feel that we are at the ends of, our, of the earth, the Lord will hear us. Sometimes we need actually to get to the end of self, the end of our own resources. Sometimes we need uh, for God to let us go that far. Uh, and the thing is, our God gives us complete freedom. Our God is not coercive. He's not uh, a bully. He gives us complete freedom of choice, uh, freedom of expression, uh, absolute free will. We can do what we like. There will be consequences for the things that we do. Uh, let's not um, be unrealistic about that. But God gives us that freedom, total and complete freedom. And we can go as far as we can. We can go as far away from him as we desire. But he will always hear us. We cry from the ends of the earth. We cry out at the time of need. And the Lord is there. He's never, never gone away. In fact, the Lord is everywhere. So, uh, as it says in Psalm, 139 though I make my bed in hell they're out there you know even if we go as far as we can't possibly can we don't escape from the presence of the Lord but the great thing is we don't escape from having our prayers answered and from the God who hears us and the key thing is to discover that there is something higher than I we live uh, our lives uh, and most of us if we are honest we are the centre of our lives you might say well no no I live for my my wife my husband I live for my children I would do anything for them all these very noble thoughts and acts I live for my, for my parents I, I live to look after someone else uh, I live for the good of others but actually if we're very re honest and we're very realistic we are the center of our own universe most of the time aren't we uh, this is the case uh, until we discover otherwise until we discover a meaning of life until we discover the Lord and then maybe he puts a different perspective in our heart and in our minds not that we stop being selfish completely you know we still have that tendency to sin we still have that uh, temptation that is there but th we sometimes come to that point in life where we realize that there is a rock that is higher than I me and my thoughts my opinions my ideas uh, my convictions my per my personal choices uh, they're all fine but actually to live our lives successfully we need something higher we need something outside of self you know every man's uh, works are right in his own eyes uh, this is the thing isn't it we all think that we've done right we all think that oh, well I don't think I've done wrong but we need a perspective from outside don't we the Lord weighs the spirits and that is what we need uh, as Job says we need a daysman a referee someone who is outside of the situation someone who uh, 
is not coloured by judgement somebody who uh, is going to be completely fair somebody who doesn't have an ulterior motive and the word of God tells us actually there is a rock that is higher than self there's a rock that is higher than I am than me and my desires and my convictions and my thoughts it's um, it's the Lord and our hearts get overwhelmed we can't go on maybe we feel that we've reached the end of something maybe we feel that uh, something has to give something has to change uh, when that happens where do we go the Lord is there waiting to hear our cry from the ends of the earth we cry unto him and he is there we're still talking about the fact that he is a shelter to us he is an abiding place and that was a a great thought uh, I will abide in the tabernacle forever but then it goes on as well for thou O God <coughs> this is the part that we didn't quite get to this morning verse 5 for thou O God hast heard my vows thou hast given me the heritage of those that fear thy name wow there's a heritage there's an inheritance that is coming to us for those that fear the name of the Lord we were talking this morning about how it takes great humility to leave things in God's hands it takes great maturity for us to come to that point where we think well I don't have any control over this situation I have to leave it with the Lord I have to just give it to him and trust him with the situation but if we are able to do that we find that God is faithful there's a heritage there's an inheritance there's a blessing to the, those that fear the name of the Lord and that is something that can be very precious to us when we get to that point where we feel the name of the Lord when we realize that we need someone outside of self when we realize that we need someone who is greater God hears us he recognizes us and the, the amazing thing is that God even honors us in that it says you've heard my vows and you've given me an inheritance does God owe us anything? no he doesn't are we due to get something? can we make demands of the Lord? no we can't and yet the nature of God is this that he sees us when we cry out to him and no matter how, it, how long it's been since the last time we, we cried out to him no matter how long whatever has gone on in between he gives us that opportunity to be blessed he gives us the heritage of those that fear his name why? because we turn to him when, once we turn to him it's an acknowledgement that we do fear his name when we're open to him it's a real opportunity and as we said this morning our God is looking for a relationship why should he answer our prayers why should he care about small insignificant people on a planet that's insignificant in the in this grand scheme of the universe because of relationship because of trust we draw near to our, our God we trust him he draws near to us 
we trust we leave things in God's hands we trust him with them and he comes through and he's faithful and the more we trust him the more we are able to trust him and the more we trust him that that, that experience is, is, is born and it builds us hope in us as well we see God's faithfulness we are able to trust him and he gives us that blessing the heritage of those that fear their name now it, it goes on talking about the king's life and he, who is the king and you think well you know what this is written by David so maybe he's talking about himself as the king you know, how oh, you will prolong the king's life and his years as many generations. David had a, a close walk with the Lord. Born out of necessity, really. We can't say anything other than that. It wasn't like, you know, well, I'm so good, I'm going to be close to God all the time. No, it was the case that actually I'm in desperate need, Lord. I'm on the run from Saul. I'm on the run from Absalom. I have enemies all around, different ones, uh, enemies in my own family, uh, Philistines hiding in caves, feigning madness, uh, looking at the top of the mulberry trees, whatever it is, uh, many stories about David's life. But you know what? He desperately needed to trust the Lord. And as he relied on God, God said, well, this is a man after my own heart. This is a man who I can deal with. This is a man who I will trust to rule the kingdom. Why? Because he will trust me. This is the thing, isn't it? This is so often the case. God chose people who would rely on him. We were talking uh, after service this morning um, with someone uh, about, about weakness and things like that. And I said, well, you know, think about Moses. Why was, Mo why was Moses chosen? Because he had a stammer. He didn't want to speak. He didn't want to speak for the people. He didn't want to lead. He, did, he had no desire to do these things. He wouldn't wouldn't go back to Egypt because that's where he was a known murderer. Why would he do this? And uh, God says to him, "I tell you what, take Aaron. Uh, your brother, your brother will go with you. Aaron will speak for you. If you if you can't speak, you know, trust in that. But we have no record." Aaron ever speaking for Moses it, is, it never happens Moses does all the speaking to Pharaoh to the people of Israel to everyone it's always Moses why? because God knew that he would rely on him when we have a need when we have a weakness when our heart is overwhelmed the result is that we have to rely on the Lord we have nowhere else to go. We have no other resource. It's actually a great blessing to have our heart overwhelmed. It is actually a great blessing to realize that we are weak. To realize that we are broken. We were speaking, uh, I think a week, just over a week ago, on the Wednesday night, about brokenness. And, uh, yeah. This is how this is what God requires for the broken to be used. Because the glory goes to the Lord. Strong people, powerful people, people who have it all together, people who have no problems, people who think that they are perfect in their own eyes, people who are always proclaiming their own good works, blowing their own trumpet telling people what a good job they're going to do 
what a good job they've done. You know what? Those people don't need the Lord. They don't rely on the Lord. They rely on their own strength. But those that are broken, those that are needy, those that are overwhelmed, they cry out to the Lord from the ends of the earth. And the Lord hears them. And the Lord uses them. And God works through them. And God does great things for them on their behalf. And God does great things through them. That's the point. We're not here even for ourselves. We're here to be used for others. And our lives lay down, affect other people. And our lives point people to the Lord Jesus Christ, who is our hope, our strength. And the one who has removed every, every barrier between us and God. The one who's laid down his life and paid for our sin, paid for our failings and our weaknesses, so that we can have that relationship with the Lord that we so need. That's the whole point. Our lives are here to glorify Him. We have no other real purpose. Yeah, there are many other things we can do, many other activities, many things that we may be called to do, uh, many things that we need to do. But our purpose is to glorify Him. Always. And anything else is just... Uh, it's just like a decoration, really. <laughs> but yeah, that will prolong the king's life and his years as many generations. He shall abide before God forever. Prepare mercy and truth which may preserve him. When we read that, what does it remind us of? We have, you can see the Christmas tree beside me, uh, probably, part of it at least. Um, what does Christmas remind us of? God preparing truth and mercy. Lord Jesus Christ was the word of God John chapter 1 tells us in verse 14 that the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory as the only begotten of the Father full of grace and truth God prepared mercy and truth. God prepared grace and truth to come to the earth. He prepared his son. The coming of his son. The advent. That's what advent means, isn't it? Coming, really. Uh, in Latin. But uh, the coming of uh, the Messiah the son of the living God to the world for the first time with God's long awaited preparation the preparation of mercy and truth together the embodiment of God's judgment and God's clemency coming together that God would say yes maybe you failed maybe you're guilty maybe you're a sinner Maybe you've done things that you regret. Maybe you've done uh, many things that people will accuse you of. But there's a price being paid and responsibility has been taken for all of those things. When the Lord Jesus Christ went to the cross of Calvary, when God made a sacrifice, when God made a provision, when God took the responsibility for the the people he'd created and he took the blame for their actions these are my children I love them I made them in my image I allowed them free will on the earth 
and when they've done something wrong I will take the blame, I will take the responsibility and I will pay the price the Lord Jesus Christ did this in the reality of Calvary the repercussions of it are real for us today mercy and truth have been prepared for us we celebrate it at Christmas, we celebrate it at Easter we see the full potential of it as we read God's word and as we walk with him he teaches us of himself and he teaches us his way but we need that honesty, that openness that humility to say that we need a, a rock that is higher than us we need one greater we need another provision we need something outside of self so will I praise will I sing praise unto thy name forever that I may daily perform my vows when we understand the depth of grace the depth of mercy and truth coming together it puts a song in our heart when we realize actually that the Lord Jesus Christ did take our blame, our guilt every shame, every wickedness and dealt with it then it gives us freedom it gives us peace it puts a song in our heart we can sing praise to the Lord we can be free of all the worry all the concern all the anxiety all the pressures the regrets they've all gone Christ has borne them on the cross and he has risen from the grave and his life comes to us his life is in us we can sing praise in fact we do sing praise and we perform our vows daily in other words we suddenly are able to live for Christ we are able to live for our God not for ourselves all the while not just living uh, uh, as I think and living in my opinions living in what I've absorbed from uh, from my work colleagues from the BBC from um, whatever else is around us what, uh, what uh, uh, the ingredients of my packed lunch or whatever it is no we have a higher purpose we have a greater life we have a hope that goes into eternity let's pray Heavenly Father, we just thank you tonight, Lord, that you are a God who came through for us, who loves us, who has a perfect plan for us. Thank you, Lord, that we can trust you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you took the blame for our, our failings and our sins. And thank you, Lord, that you come through as a higher power, as, a, as, a, as an outsider as a referee, as one that is outside of self. Lord, we need that. We desperately need that. We need a higher rock. We need it when we are overwhelmed, when we are struggling, when we're, when we're done. Thank you, Lord, that you are there. When human capacity fails, when our ability comes to an end, the power of the living God takes over. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you've removed every barrier between God and man. Thank you, Lord, that you've dealt with the issues that we created and that we put up there. But thank you, Lord, that, that Calvary tore those issues down, removed the obstacles, and gives us relationship, gives us freedom, that we can cry out with every thought, with every need. And our God hears us. And our God answers us. And our God comes through for us. 
And thank you, Lord, that you put a song in our heart. That we can trust you. That we can delight in you. That we can praise you. Fill us with your life now, Lord, we pray. And if there's anyone out there watching who's never trusted Christ as their Saviour, and who doesn't know of that joy and that peace, Lord, we just ask that this would be the time when they say, Lord, I know I need someone outside of myself, someone higher than me, someone bigger than me, someone who's who's not influenced by all the, the temptations and the issues and the opinions and the and swayed by my circumstances. Someone who's neutral, someone who's outside of it all. Thank you, Lord, for being a God who is bigger, who is higher. Thank you, Lord, for being a God who forgives. Lord, we worship you now. Thank you, Lord, come into my heart. Be my saviour. Meet my needs. Heal my inconsistencies. Forgive the things that I've done that I need forgiveness for, Lord. And give me that sense of relationship with you, of peace with you, of belonging to you, of knowing you. Give me the inheritance of those that fear your name. Thank you, Lord. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, we're going to sign off now uh, and God willing we'll see you again at some point soon. Uh, take care, uh, God bless and uh, bye for now.